Hello everyone, welcome back to these Emmy Broker tutorials. I just thought I'd do a really quick video on how to do a buy and hold in Emmy Broker AFL. I think this is a, you know, or Emmy Broker formula language in other words. Um, once you know a tiny, tiny little bit of Emmy Broker formula language, the, the world really opens up to a lot of possibilities because you can test so much stuff and it takes literally seconds to minutes to do. Um, if you were to do this stuff manually, it might take hours, weeks, months, and potentially even years, and yet with a click of a button you can do it so simply with Emmy Broker. That's what I really love about it. Now this buy and hold, why would we want to do a buy and hold Emmy Broker AFL? Well, let's say if we wanted to do a quick, to, to see how the index was performing, for example, let's say if you were using the S&P 500 in America, the FTSE in Europe potentially, or down under Australia where I am at the moment, then you might be using the All Ordinaries Index. Um, whatever it is, you might want to track your yourself against the index and see how you're going. And you can do a simple buy and hold just to see how you are performing. So let's just have a look and I'll just move this up a little bit so that we can see what we want to do is to go to, in our AMI broker, we want to go to analysis and formula editor. And this will open up our, our AMI broker formula um, language editor. And this is where we can type all of our good stuff. Now, basically, all we're going to do for an Emmy Broker buy and hold is a buy and sell signal. So, if we, when you, when you type it in, you'll notice that it goes bold. So, if it goes bold, that means that Emmy Broker uh, recognizes it and it actually understands what we're trying to say. Buy and sell signals are the the basis for pretty much all of your um, all of your uh, back testing ideas. It all comes down to the buy and sell signals. What you set up before that. Um, could be anything, and it could be up to you. But what we're looking at is buy equals, and this is where, say, in a digital world, we've got ones and zeros. What is the is the value for a correct value? It's a one, isn't it? So we could do buy equals one, and then semicolon to end it, or and you know a sell equals zero and a semicolon to end it. And basically, that would be buy equals true. So True would start at the beginning of, of our, you know, whenever we wanted to start it. Sell would be at the end of whenever we wanted to end it. So we'd put in those dates in the um, in the actual program itself. I'll show you that in a second as well. But what else could we do? That's not the only way to do it. So we could do buy. If we just want buy equals true, we could t try typing in true. And you see it goes bold. So happy days, it does recognize it. And sell equals false. False. In other words, when the series ends, and I reckon that could actually potentially work as well. So what we might do is just save that. Let's save that as, where are we here? Let's go buy and hold. Awesome. Yes. Hallelujah. Okay, and what we'll do, see this little button here with all the pretty colors? This is the button that checks. We can check this, uh, this code just to see that it works. And if we check it, uh, it seems, seems the formula does not contain any future quotes, blah, blah, blah. In other words, if this comes up, it means that our, our code doesn't contain any errors. So that's good, that's a good start. And next we want to send it to our analysis window. What I prefer to do, guys, I actually prefer, I'm a little bit old school, I prefer the old automatic analysis, this one here. <laughs> I don't know why, I just find it easier to use, um, but that's just me. So what I will need to do is see up the top here, I pick the, uh, the one that I want to use, and we've got buy and hold awesome, there it is, happy days. And if we edit it, we can see that that's the one that we just wrote there. Buy equals true, sell equals false. Too easy. And what we want to do is we can set it to our current symbol, happy days. Now that's the all ordinaries, which is what I've got there. And we want to set from the 1st of the 1st, 2000 to the 31st of May, 2013. So that will be our range for backtesting. And last but not least, we just click that backtest button. Bada bim, bada boom. That gives us our result over here, and if we want to see that result in a little bit more pretty format, then we can click Report, and if we click Report, 
This gives us all of our beautiful data. So we made one trade, which means that it works. It means we've got our buy and hold. We started at the beginning, we ended at the end, as people tend to do. Yes, that sounded a little bit funny. Um, but it gave us our profit and loss. So over 13 years on the All Ordinaries, if you'd have, have buy, uh, bought and hold, held, then 55% would be your return. That's not really stellar, is it? And as you can see, it gives you, if we just click charts up the top here, then that will also give us our, um, our little equity chart, which is great, great stuff. And you know, actually, it'll also show us if we scroll down, our drawdown. Um, so potentially using a buy and hold, your drawdown may have been 50% at some point, which is uh, not many people could stomach that. In fact, that would cause a lot of people to stop investing altogether, to be quite frank with you. Um, and there's our single trade there. <laughs> so usually you'd have like hundreds of trades in your, um, in your analysis, but we've just got a buy and hold. That's it. So there's your buy and hold. And if you've performed better than 55% altogether over the last 13 years, then you have beaten the index. Congratulations. Well, that's great. That's enough for me. Guys, have a fantastic week. Um, we'll catch you with the next video. Other than that, happy trending and bye for now.